Okay, and welcome to your first C++ programming video. In this video, we're going to be looking at variables. Um, so, the first thing we're going to take a look at is the, the types of variables we're going to have in C++. So, I'll point your direction right here to this little chart I typed out. And <coughs> you'll notice that uh, the be a little bit different of variables than you're used to. Um, we have shorts and longs and ints, um, which you might be familiar with, as all, and also char. Uh, you had all that in C, and you also might be uh, a little bit familiar with float and double. But we also have this unsigned short and unsigned long as well. Uh, and actually, different sections of unsigned. And what that means is that unsigned is when only positive values occur. Okay, and signed is when they have both positive and negative values. So this unsigned short uh, will have positive values and no negative values. Same goes for this long and these unsigned int. In these different types of variables that we have here, they all have different sizes. You notice that the shorts are two bytes, longs are four bytes, ints are four bytes, and uh, a long long int is eight bytes. It's a huge variable right there. Um, along with double that has eight, float that has four, char and boolean have a byte each. Now in C++, you have a float and a double that essentially do the same thing. However, the float is smaller than a double, and it is holds up to seven digits of accuracy, where a double is larger and can hold up to 15 digits of accuracy. If you look here in this program, you notice that I have an unsigned int, my int, and I set it to value of 2, and I go ahead and I print that out. That's how you would normally would just initialize the variable, and you must initialize the variables, because if you notice, if I go ahead and uninitialize this variable, and I try to print them out, you get a little message here, debug error, you know, my to it is being used without being initialized. And it destroys the program. So I have to go back in here and initialize it back to zero and we run it again. Everything is hunky dory. Print out <coughs> two for the first one and zero zero for the Themes. <clears throat> Same goes for floats. You'll notice that that I initialize it to 0, 0.0. The same thing will occur if I try to take this away. So those are ways of initializing your variables and printing them out. <clears throat> now, if you'll notice that sometimes typing out this unsigned int might be a little bit too long. Sometimes you want to create a definition to define um, a, a way of saying different things. And uh, I use the unsigned int as an example because that could be a pretty long lengthy process of going ahead and typing that all out. So if you use something called type def unsigned int and then named it u i u int then every time I use the keyword uint, it'll mean unsigned int. So instead of typing unsigned int with, I already just use uint in the beginning uh, to use this definition that I created right here. So I don't have to type it over and over again. And if you notice down here, uh, it's a little bit simpler, cleaner code. So when I did the area, which is width times length, I was able to use this uint definition that I declared, and it made it look cleaner and easier to use. 
One familiar thing that you remember from C or may or may not is something called constants. And those are values that cannot be changed. So cannot be changed. So um, they're great for set variables that need to be defined at all times and don't allow the user to change them or any other kind of co parts of the code. Um, and they're great. The one way they're great because uh, in this example here, my max class size is 25, and I don't want that to be changed by anybody. I just it's just a defined variable that I want to be used throughout the code. And this is the way I declared it by using the keyword const, uh, then the type, which is an int, and then in all capital letters is the uh, convention of naming constants. That way you can recognize a constant right away when you go ahead and use uh, the capital letters. <clears throat> now another way you can do this, um, oh, here we go, here's an example of me trying to change the constant value, you notice that gives me an error right away when I try to do that. So it's a good way of getting a solid value that, that cannot be changed unless you change it in the declaration. Let's go ahead and comment that back. Now another way of doing this is uh, the method 2 a way of doing this is using the pound define. And I say C top because uh, I put these all the way to the top here. And a pound define max C size gets 25. Now you defined it for the entire program. Now we'll talk about a little bit about global variables but this now is available to the entire program um, with the max size being a 25 using the pound of five and it essentially made it a global variable where it not only can be seen inside of main but any other function that may have come up later on <clears throat> which leads me to my global example so this right here is a variable declared outside of the main at the top and this is called a global variable and this variable could be seen not only within main but if we had any other functions outside of main it could also be seen in there too um, these variables that we declared in here could only be seen within side of main uh, if we had another function below this main it would not be able to see it it's the scope of this variable is within side of main. So global variables are can be useful if you want the variable to be seen outside of main. Now sometimes you want variables to be seen only by the function that it's called by itself. So that's good. It's just a good way of trying to figure out where you want your variables to be seen and where you do not want your variables to see, be seen. Well, this was a pretty good introductory to variables. Hopefully, you were able to understand quite a bit. And if not, just go ahead and replay the video over and over again. And it should give you um, a good foundation for our next video.